After months of anticipation, Microsoft's Windows 10 Creators Update is starting to roll out. Now this is the second major update to Windows 10, and as the name implies, there are some things in here that'll be of interest to creators, but there's actually quite a bit more to it than that. Microsoft Edge is actually getting some fairly substantial updates in the Creators Update, and there's two particular features that you're gonna want to take a look at, and they both relate to tab management. So. One of the features is a drop down here uh, that you can tap or click a uh, little arrow by your tab and it brings down a view, a preview that can list as many tabs as you have open so you can see what exactly it is that you do have open. You can kind of look at a glance uh, what you have going on. So that's a pretty handy feature um, and it seems to perform quite well in our testing. Um, doesn't seem to slow the browser down too much. Another feature is the ability to save your session. And what this means is you tap an icon over here, uh, and as you can see, our website is gone now, and that's because it's saved. Uh, it's saved over here in the left corner, and then you can see I've got a few sessions that are saved, and if I wanna open one of those up, uh, I can just uh, click the Restore tabs, and those will come back, um, provided your internet connection is gonna cooperate. Um, there we go. So the, the tabs are back now, and you can save a uh, theoretically infinite number of those sessions. I'm sure there is some sort of breaking point, uh, but we've saved uh, at least up to 10 and didn't see any problems with that. Aside from those two features, Edge in general has just received a lot of uh, nice updates over the, the smaller incremental updates that come out in between these big ones. So you, you have extensions now, uh, you have the ability to uh, save your bookmarks and then go and see them between different devices. So if I save a bookmark here, I can bring it up on another one of my Windows 10 devices I'm logged into. Uh, little tweaks like that. Uh, general performance is also very good. So uh, Edge is a pretty good browser these days. It's probably not gonna convince any Chrome users to switch or anything like that, but it's definitely worth checking out and might convince some people uh, to leave it as the default. Now next up we have games, which might seem a little funny because it's the creator's update, right? But actually, there are some notable new game features that are in this update. If we go and bring up the settings menu, uh, we can see that there's now gaming over here. If you tap that, you're gonna see a variety of options that are related to gaming all in one nice centralized place. Now, some of these options were there before, but you can only access them through the Xbox box app, which was a little bit confusing. Uh, there are some new features to note though. Broadcasting uh, is one of those features. And you can now broadcast to Beam, uh, which is a live streaming service like Twitch, right through Windows 10. It comes up uh, as the game bar, which you activate by pressing the Windows and G key together. That brings up your game bar and then you can, can broadcast straight from Windows 10 without any other software installed. In fact, if you don't have a Beam account and you're logged in with your Microsoft account, it automatically makes an account for you. So it really couldn't get much easier there, although the downside is that this isn't something that a professional streamer is gonna use. You're not gonna you know, get internet famous with this. There's a very limited selection of options in terms of how you stream. Uh, otherwise, we have game mode, um, which is supposed to allow you to get a little bit more performance out of your system. It prioritizes CPU and GPU usage to make sure the games are getting the first stab at that. Uh, at least in theory, we've tested it some, we haven't seen a whole lot of uh, difference with game mode on. It also has a little bit of an issue with compatibility, not all games are gonna support game mode, and you also have to make sure it's turned on both here and also within the game in a lot of cases. Uh, there'll be a separate switch that you have to turn on and settings, so that can get a little bit confusing. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting feature, it does have some promise. We've seen some small fluctuations, but right now it's not gonna turn an older system into a killer gaming machine or anything like that. All right, so let's finally get to the creators part of that creators update, right? Well, here you're looking at the main thing, which is Paint 3D, and it is a new application for making 3D models, uh, much like Paint is for creating images. Uh, and it's very simple, again, like paint. Uh, you're mainly looking at a small selection of tools here. It lets you draw items in three-dimensional space. There is also some built-in models, so you can put in a dog here, uh, you can see, and I can now rotate that. Uh, I can flip them on his head and you know make them different sizes and, and things like that. You can get a variety of models to together. You can put stickers on them. 
it's supposed to be a way to quickly prototype a 3D model or just sort of mess around with it, you know, get started with it. Um, now, Microsoft sort of pitched this as a creator's uh, piece of software, something you can use to even 3D print. Uh, so if I made this dog here, in theory, I could 3D print him. And when we tested that out, you can, in fact, do that. Um, however, it doesn't really work quite as well as you might hope. The main issue is that it seems the file type this saves to um, provides a little bit more data actually than is necessary, and it doesn't import into a lot of the uh, hobbyist 3D printing uh, slicer apps very well. So you end up having to do a little tweaking, a little more than you probably would like after you put this model into the 3D printer. Um, it's also just a very simplistic app. So you see here we have our dog and you might ask, well, what if I want to look at it from different angles? And the answer is that you don't have a lot of options there. You have this sort of, uh, this one view here you can click into and then that's your editing pane. Um, but there's not anything as far as uh, grouping items together easily, layering things together easily. Um, so it, it's so simple really that you probably aren't going to be able to do a whole lot with it other than just mess around, which is what a lot of people did with Paint. Now this is the creator's update, so while Paint 3D is fine, it works for what it is, it's not really the productivity tool that might have been imagined when Microsoft made the pitch originally for the creator's update. Another issue with it is that uh, the pitch sort of involved Microsoft Mixed Reality, which is its whole platform for virtual reality headsets and augmented reality headsets like the HoloLens and also some new headsets that are going to be coming out in the, the remaining half of 2017. The thing is, those headsets aren't really available to consumers yet. I mean, the HoloLens has been out for developers. It's like $3,000. It's way too expensive for most people to buy. Those other cheaper headsets, they're not out yet. And we don't know exactly when they are going to be out. So um, maybe you could use this to prototype some sort of 3D environment for one of those headsets, but that's just, it's not really a practical reality right now. And that's a little bit disappointing. Um, so it ultimately comes down to Windows 10 creators update. The actual creators part of it seems a little lacking. Um, this isn't probably going to greatly enhance your productivity or suddenly enable you to 3D print things when before you could not. Um, but it does make Edge a lot better and, and very, really very usable. Uh, it does add some nifty game options that I think a lot of gamers will appreciate, especially those who view streaming as something they just want to use to share with friends rather than something they want to turn to you know, a professional career or something like that. Uh, and there's also a variety of other tweaks that we can't really get into uh, with a video, but lots of little minor tweaks like dark mode and edge. Uh, new personalization options, wider range of colors that you know aren't critical, but they're definitely appreciated, and they are helping evolve Windows 10 into a really mature desktop operating system. So, is it worth a download? Yeah, it's worth a download. We're not aware of any reason that you wouldn't want to download it. It does have features that are very useful, uh, even to an everyday user. Um, even if it doesn't live up to every promise that may have been made originally, still, it's definitely worth your time and your bandwidth to get it on your system.